Legends of Runeterra has a lot going for it in terms of what makes it one of the most accessible and fun card games on the market right now. And one of those big pros in my mind is the Expedition Mode. This is essentially the draft. If you're familiar with Hearthstones, Arena, or Magic the Gathering draft tournaments, this is kind of in that vein. Expeditions allows you to take cards that are given to you at random, make the best deck that you can, and get as far as you can. Naturally, if you've been playing card games a long time, and this will come pretty easy to you, but for people who are just jumping in or coming from other card games without it, this can seem really difficult. That's why I wanted to give you some key pieces of advice to succeeding in Legends of Runeterra's Expedition Mode. Let's get into it. Let me explain what Runeterra's Expedition Mode for people who aren't familiar. You either use an Expedition token or some other form of currency to get a pass at an Expedition. This will give you two trials. A trial is simply you are given choices of cards that are pooled into cards of three, and you make the best deck that you can. Uh, you do get opportunities to add more cards to your decks the more you win. You also have chances to trade out cards, including one trade at the end of your deck creation. The goal is to go up against other players who are in the same situation and win as many times as you can. The more times you win, the better rewards that you can get. In fact, there is a certain point where if you get past seven wins in a trial, you are essentially getting back more rewards than you put in to queue up for Expedition. So you can profit a little bit from this mode, but it is not super easy to succeed in this all the time. You have to have a lot of deck building experience and just kind of know what works in any given situation. Luckily, this mode is very forgiving. You can lose as many times as you want as long as you don't lose two games in a row. If you lose two games in a row, you're out. Also, you get two cracks at it. I mentioned that there are multiple trials, so you get to do two different drafts, and you were rewarded based on whichever one was better for you. So if in your first trial you only won four times, but in your second one you won seven, then you are going to get the rewards for the seven expedition win that you got. So how do you know what's good to draft? You're gonna be given a lot of different choices from the different factions in the game. Some of them will be singular to one faction, and others will be combinations. You're going to be given champions, units, spells, and it can seem really overwhelming, especially for new players. Uh, but a lot of really smart people have put together great resources to kind of guide you through this creating a deck process. And I'm going to show you one of those right now. I've got to give full credit for this resource to Crabcore. He shared this spreadsheet on the Legends of Runeterra subreddit, which breaks down based on his research and talking to other expert players, what are the best picks in terms of value for when you are going through expedition mode in the game. It is extensive and he keeps this thing up to date. I'm not 100% sure if it is updated for the recent balance patch that we just got, uh, but that doesn't mean that this resource isn't worth using. It's fantastic. Fantastic. You'll notice on the left here, he's got a grading scale, which grades things from five down to zero. Zero being absolute trash, five being the game winning bombs as he dubs them. He also breaks this down into each of the individual factions to kind of showcase which are the most valuable picks to go for. You can use this resource while you're drafting and I would highly encourage you to do it because I've done it and I've had a lot of success with it. Uh, so there's a lot of cards that are listed here way too many for us to talk about on an individual basis uh, but you can go through this for yourself the link uh, to this is going to be in the description as well as to Crabcore's YouTube channel uh, where he specifically does a lot of videos talking about expedition strategy so I would encourage you to go check this guy out I do want to add an extra little note to this. This flowchart, this spreadsheet, it's not an end-all, be-all. Things are going to be situational and are largely going to depend on what the other cards you already have in your deck are. You can follow this to the best of your ability, but you also need to factor in the other tools that you have at your disposal. And that's another key piece of advice I want you to remember. You have to take in your entire deck when you are composing and adding new cards to it. Just because a champion is high up on the list doesn't mean that it is necessarily the best pick for you if there's another champion out there that synergizes better with the tools you already have at your disposal. The key is you want to create easy access win conditions for your deck. You can't do that if you're just adding a hodgepodge of things that don't really 
actually go together or assist each other. You want cards that are going to work well together, so that's something you need to keep in mind. This spreadsheet is fantastic, and it is a great tool to use, but it is not the end-all be-all, and things are going to be situational. Another tip for Expedition, when you are choosing your cards, you want to pick definitive cards that are going to get you results. What do I mean by that? You don't want to pick cards that are going to be largely situational for them to give you the benefit. Uh, things that are forced to trigger off of other things happening, things that require other units to be on the board, situations that you may not always be able to create. If you get those cards, but you don't have the other pieces that necessarily make them work, you're going to regret having them in your deck all together. You want threats that are definitive, they are easy to understand, and they are straightforward. You want to create obstacles for your opponent. You don't want to try to be uh, like the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is sometimes, where they get incredibly tricky with very specific cards that nobody would ever in their right mind run. You are not Yugi Moto. You are not Seto Kaiba, as much as you might like to think that you are. You want to construct your deck intelligently with definitive answers that are going to get you results more often than not. Another thing to keep in mind, it is much easier to build an early to mid game deck than it is to build a late game one. Now, how do you separate these categories specifically for Runeterra? Late game decks are going to typically be primarily balanced on control. The early games are going to be more aggro, and then the mid game are going to be those mid range decks. That's where the name comes from. You want to build a deck that is going to try to get its win earlier than later. It's just more reliable that way to do for this specific format. By the numbers, you will more likely succeed in the early to mid game than you are the late game. And that's because the late game requires a lot of things to go really well for you in the early game for you to really capitalize on that. And with a deck that is going to largely be randomized based on your choices and not naturally the most efficient it can be, control becomes a less reliable option in these situations. With that being said, here's another thing to keep in mind, because most people are not going to be building for those controlly style elements, that means that battle spells are really, really strong. The spells that are going to affect units in combat. Uh, these are already good in Runeterra and they are even better in this specific mode because most decks are going to be more unit heavy than they are spell heavy. So being able to turn the tide of a really specific clash of units can be incredibly valuable. More so than they are in an average game when you're queuing up in rank. So things like Elixir of Iron, other specific buffs of that nature can be really, really valuable and can really turn the tide of a match. So if you come across these, you should really consider drafting them. This next piece of advice I am totally stealing from somebody else. I will admit to that and give him full credit. That is Sam C. Will. He's a Twitch streamer who specializes specifically in expeditions. And his key piece of advice that he offered is don't assume that your opponent has all of the answers. This is something that I only just now started implementing into my play and it really works. When you're playing a standard card game in ranked, your mind automatically drifts to, okay, this deck is based around this faction. I've played this before. Therefore, he's trying to set up for whatever card in any specific situation. You can sort of predict when a deny is coming, a withering whale, those turn the tide spell cards that are staples in a lot of really popular decks. Expedition is not going to be like that because the element of randomness is definitely a factor. Not all decks will be built as consistently as they can. So you kind of have to turn that switch off in your brain to sometimes throw caution to the wind and say, you know what, he's floating at least four mana. Deny is a possibility here, but he may not have it. In fact, the chances of him having it are less than if he didn't have it. So I should just go for it. This is a tough thing to do. It's a hard habit to break. Uh, but if you can do this and take a few extra risks, you can actually get a lot of reward from it. My final piece of advice for Expedition is to try to be as consistent as you can. When you're constructing your deck, you want to build for consistency. I've talked about this in all of my deck building videos, not just Teppan, but Runeterra as well. You want to try to make the deck as consistent as possible. That's why it will win more often than lose, because if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be playing the deck anyway. And above all, have fun. Expedition is about taking a fresh look uh, at a new deck and seeing how far it can go, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so if you haven't tried Runeterra's Expedition Mode, I would highly encourage you to do so. 
Thanks very much for taking the time to watch. I hope this expedition tips video is useful to you. And if it was, you can totally hit the like button and subscribe so that you'll get more content from me. I've got more Rune Terra stuff in the works and we'll talk more about Teppin, everybody's favorite Capcom card game, when new content starts to come out. And that will be in July. So look forward to that. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.